Thank what you was so the much. question? I forgot. <laughs> I don't even know what the question was. Cowboy Bebop was as if an animated series handed the keys over to Quentin Tarantino. Cowboy Bebop is mid-century modern in space. Cowboy Bebop is film noir with cowboys in space. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Falling Towers. Watch the first podcast, podcast in which watch the first episode of a series so that you don't have to. Today, you may have guessed, we are doing a review of Netflix's brand new live action series called Cowboy Bebop, which is a derivative of a uh, animated series, apparently. Uh, first episode is Cowboy Gospel. Today, joining us, very special co-host, filling in for Michael Kenyon Rosenberg, who's still out recuperating very nicely from his kidney transplant, Mr. Rico E. Anderson. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Please hold your applause. We did. Oh, okay. uh, <laughs> and our special guest today is actress, cosplayer, bodybuilder, hand model, and now director, apparently, Vera Vanguard. Woo! I didn't hold my applause. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow, she's also a mime. <laughs> I know. And she freezes well. Yeah. Okay. okay. Oh, I, you guys, the audio cut out, so I didn't hear that. We hear you now, okay. though. There you are. There you are. Look at those there hands go. That's a hand model for you. Warrior princess. All right. So here's hoping, and I think I'm right in guessing this. I feel like one or both of you may have seen Cowboy Bebop before, which is going to help this review quite a bit. So first things first, uh, everybody at home, if you would like us to review a series, whether you love it, whether you hate it, whether you just haven't watched it yet and you're curious about it, just say WTF, type WTF in the comments below. That stands for watch the first, of course. So you could say WTF wings or WTF the Jeffersons or WTF Smurfs, and we will possibly review it. So let's get started. WTF MASH. WTF MASH. I've never seen it. I've never Great seen any show. of those except Smurfs. Smurfs are awesome. You've never seen the Jeffersons? Dude. I don't think so. I uh, mean, uh, once or twice when I was like a baby. That was a long well, time ago. I count. You remember everything when you were a baby, right? I remember exactly. the dude. There was a dude. He like he would shimmy or something, right? He had like a shimmy to yeah. him. He has a walk similar like to Doug Jones's Saru and Star Trek Discovery. With yes, the, with the that is what I, yes. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. Or like uh, Cheech Marin in Born in East L.A. or whatever that movie was. Where he's like, hey, you got to walk like you just cut one. You know, that's what he says. Anyway. <laughs> okay. So that's how I walk. Here we go. First things first. Okay. We got to, where's Vera? Where'd she go? Uh, Vera, are you there? It, it's it's a great look. <laughs> it's, it's like oh, Broadway. Da, 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 da. Yeah, we hear you, Vera. Okay. So back to work. Uh, right, first thing we that got? we like to do, and this is my very favorite thing to do, our favorite game, shall we say. Also, everybody at home, please like, subscribe, share this video, tell your friends. It's very important. It's like virtual gold. Okay, so, so we like to make predictions. Heard okay. a little audio shuffle in there. I, I feel like I should be sitting on the side like Michael does and kind of looks off to the, like in a three quarter position. Does he? I thought you were just trying to blend in with the picture and like lean in. I'm always trying to blend in, Ryan, mm -hmm. whatever your name is. Okay, <laughs> whatever your name is. Okay. <laughs> So uh, predictions. Michael and I have known each other for over 20 years, so we can usually predict whether the other person liked it. Rico and I have known each other for over eight years now, ever since early October of 2013. 
Uh, Over Vera, 20 months. I think we can hear Vera typing. <laughs> Dang, <laughs> save me. <laughs> From frozen hell. Yeah. She's, she's typing away like a beast. There we go. You go, girl. And she just killed her mic. <laughs> no, I did. <laughs> oh, you did. <laughs> okay. That's all we were getting. We get a great picture in typing. You wanted to kill both. The two so, senses. Our predictions. We like to make predictions. Everybody at home, feel free to make your predictions as well. So first things first, I'm going to predict that Michael because I did think about Michael when I was watching this, I'm going to predict that Michael liked this. Hello? Yeah, hi, Vera, we hear you. Hey. So I'm gonna- Can you hear us? Yes. Uh, (laughs) Okay. We're gonna get through this. One way or the Um, other. Right. Okay. So I'm going to predict that Michael liked this. I did think of him while I was watching this and I was like, this seems like something Michael would enjoy or want to enjoy. Sure. Now, there we go. If that makes we're going to keep going. Yeah. Okay. I, um, I, I, oh, please continue. Please let me continue. Uh, I, sorry. I just had to fiddle with my microphone there. Um, okay. okay, we're having some crazy difficulties technologically right now. We are going to power through like champs, though. So it's going to be like theater. We just plow through them no matter what happens. Right, theater, baby. That's it. Hey, this is we we treat this like live stuff. <laughs> You're typing. <laughs> it might be uh, Morse code. Anybody in the audience here read Morse code? Yeah. Okay. Um, um, so okay let me just mute that Maybe, okay um, okay i can sing while you're trying to work it out no 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 okay so here's what we're gonna do michael i predict that you like this michael is going to let us know in the live chat theoretically or in the comments below if he did like it i think he liked it i think he enjoyed it i think he thought it was good fun rico okay. i'm guessing that you had seen this before because i know that it it's a it's a pretty well known show. Uh, mm-hmm. I've heard of it many times before, and you usually know all about these cult classics. So I predicted that you knew this before and already wanted to like this, and so therefore you did like this. Um, I believe that Vera also liked this because this seems like her cup of tea. Um, I think she liked it quite a bit, and I think you liked it quite a bit. Now, Rico, those are my predictions. What are yours? I predict, Ryan, that I predict that you actually like this. Um, I predict that you, Uh hey, I, I, (laughs) I, I think that you enjoyed the, the visuals but also a sense of simplicity that it had to it and a really fun uh, classic type of storyline. I predict Michael liked it too, because Michael tends to like things a little more than you do. And uh, he's fun like that. Vera, I think you liked it because it really had, it had a, just a lot of really cool elements to it that really spoke to all of us in a lot of ways. And I believe that you really appreciated the, um, what, what the, what the show has to offer kicking off. So we have two Vera Vanguards in the house, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> That's called problem solving. Okay, good I'm job. calling in on my cell phone now. <laughs> Woo! Much better. That's good okay. problem solving right there. Okay, so Vera, we're making our predictions. I predicted that you would okay. like this. I predicted that Michael and Rico would like this. 
Rico also predicted that everybody would like this. What are your predictions? I loved it. And I really want to see the rest of this series. And I, I actually never. <laughs> no, wait, 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 wait. That. <laughs> what do you predict that we felt about it? <laughs> I, predict, I predict that you guys were like probably going to be uh, like thinking about it. Like, oh, you're going to have to win me over with another episode. <laughs> So I that's what my I my hair back and everything too when I was thinking that. Yeah, 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 yeah. You just uh, I need totally. more. You need to win me over. <laughs> she knows us well. What about Michael? Do you think Michael's not here, but he may end up watching mm-hmm. this and telling us what he thinks in the live chat? Do you think Michael would like this? Is this his cup of tea? Uh, Michael is a very he's a connoisseur. He's like he needs the fine wine of sci-fi. He needs to be wooed into liking something new so i i think he he's probably going to be like you need to win my heart so mm-hmm. he's gonna need to either say a little more or he's gonna be like this is nothing like the original but did he flip his hair back when he said it oh i'm sure of course okay. Okay. <laughs> that's that's the important thing right he oh, does yeah. that a lot, though. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So everybody at home, you've gotten some hints. You've gotten some hints as to whether I liked it or Michael liked it or Rico liked it. And Michael, go ahead and make your predictions in the live chat or in the comments below. And while you're doing that, Rico is going to tell us, what is this series even about? See how slowly I said that so that you could pull it up? <laughs> oh, God. All right, um, here we go. A ragtag crew of bounty hunters chases down the galaxy's most dangerous criminals. They'll save the world for the right price. Hmm. Isn't that like what bounty hunters do? Isn't that their <laughs> job? Poignant. <laughs> yeah, but this takes place in space. Space, right, right, I say. Right. Bounty hunters in space. We've never seen yeah. anything like that before, ever. <laughs> Oh, it's, it's oh. <laughs> very nice. All right, nobody move. Nobody move. Nobody get hurt. <laughs> okay. All right. Found places. <laughs> I think that looks great, honestly. And you sound yeah. great, so we're all set. Now, all right. uh, this is Michael's favorite part of the show, I think. Mm-hmm. Or no, no, he said his favorite was what Rico just did. But this is his second favorite. It's where we uh, compare and contrast uh what we expect before we watch the show with what we actually got. Michael likes to go like this at this point and say expect Uh Or no, no, no. Did he change it? No, no. He changed predicaments. Michael, we cannot keep up with all of your contracted words. So you're just going to have to hurry back and do them yourselves. Um, okay. So we compare and contrast what we expected versus what we got. Rico... Before you watch this first episode, what did you expect? Well, first of all, full disclaimer, <gasps> I've never seen Cowboy Bebop before Really? This. Really? I yeah. expected you had. Yeah. No, I, I haven't. I haven't. So with that said, my expectations were, were high. Because as we know, I like everything. So I'm expecting <laughs> yes. it. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm expecting it to be good because, because for the most part in today's world, sci-fi world, we have so many more opportunities that we used to have 30 years ago. So it allows for really cool stuff to happen in the in the um, real life versions of stuff. You know, you think of like the Avengers and 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 a lot of the DC movies and TV mm-hmm. shows. The cool stuff that you see that looks really real, as opposed to somebody on a wire being strung across, or you know, certain things that you know is like fake, but you're still there for it. So. Um, I expected I expected to 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 
I expect it to be it it to be good. I could not get those words out, but you there you go. I think I said it. You did. Did, did that answer the question? Perfectly. I'm Perfectly. new here. I'm usually from accounting, so I'm you know. <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, accounting upstairs. When you get too noisy, we slam a broom up against the ceiling to. Yeah, I, we're going to talk to you about that later. Mm-hmm. And since we're here, oh wait, wait, we got a show to do. Go ahead. And since we're here, Vera, before you watch the first episode of Netflix's new show entitled Cowboy Bebop, the first episode of which is Cowboy Gospel, what did you expect? Well, like Rico, I've never watched the show. I've never seen the cartoon and I had no idea. Dun, dun, dun. I know, I know. You have two virgins here. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> and like Rico, like with Look Netflix right. kind of, uh, they have the budget to do the thing correctly. They Like the CGI was spectacular. It was spot on. It was top of the line. I was very, I was like, oh. Wait a second. <laughs> Vera. Vera, you yes. keep jumping the shark here. We're only talking oh. about what we expected. Vera is so excited oh. to talk about this show. <laughs> Vera, you, you didn't get the facts with all the rules. They didn't send you the facts. Yes, I said facts. Right, right. My expectations were through the roof because it's goddamn Netflix and they have all the money in the universe, or so they say. Right. So blow me away, Netflix. Blow me away. I mean, between Netflix and Disney and, you know, Starbucks. Yeah. <laughs> yes. This all makes perfect <laughs> sense to me. So I'll tell you what I expected. Uh, first of all, I expected that at least one, more likely both of you would have seen the animated series beforehand. Um, myself, I have never seen it either. So, <laughs> Three virgins. But I have heard that almost Woo! every time somebody says best animated <clears throat> show or best animated movie, best anime, more often than not, people say Cowboy Bebop. It seems to be the most popular, the most famous, the most heralded of the animes. Uh, even I know this and I don't really watch anime. So when, oh, by the way, everybody at home, this was recommended to us by Michael Kenyon Rosenberg. He's allowed to make a suggestion if he's not on the show. Now. So he's, he actually made this suggestion. So when he made the suggestion and he told me about this, I was like, oh man, I bet this is going to be big because I remember everybody liking the show and talking about this show, the anime virgin so i expected this to be probably pretty good because as vera said uh netflix they're good at what they do and also because it comes from a very wildly famous and popular anime show so that's what i expected but i didn't know anything about cowboy bebop i didn't know anything about this version of it i didn't know what it was about in any way and I didn't want to know. I wanted to go in blind. But that's what we expected. Rico, upon viewing this first episode, God, I'm so sad that I thought you guys were going to be able to answer all my questions. <laughs> upon upon uh, viewing this first episode, what did you actually get? I got a very classic mid-century modernish type of um, uh, look a cool storyline. Um, you, uh, Quentin Tarantino was mentioned, and I didn't think of that at the time, but it it makes sense now. I I I, I see that. I see it, and and um, I got a fun ride. I got a fun ride. I got. I love. I love seeing the variety of characters. Uh, the diversity in this is 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 awesome. And uh, it, it's funny, man. It's 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 funny. I love I love when sci-fi goes the funny route, and and mm-hmm. it's really nice to see to see humor when it's interjected in something that could easily be taken serious, like you know, stereotypically 
serious, you know, and, and I always cite like, and I think of say like the Avengers, like just all things Marvel and how they really do inject a lot of humor into stuff. Whereas when you read the comics, you don't see characters like Thor as somebody being funny or you don't see a lot of funny situations. So I saw funny stuff here and, and I really, I really did enjoy that. And I appreciated that. It really helped to take the story and keep it moving and, and really help us, uh, get to know the characters more and, and just, just like, like the journey. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. good stuff. Vera, I have a I, guess I as to what you actually got, <laughs> but what did you actually get? Uh, I agree with Rico. I, I enjoy the quips. I enjoy the comedy in everything because I just love comedy. Everything has to be wacky and woohoo for me. <laughs> but, uh, I thought that the effects were great. Like the characters really are diverse and great. And, and, and I got, you know, they did a very good pilot. So it's a great setup. Like, I do want to know what happens to these guys. Like, uh, the, the girl that, and the, the couple, I actually went and I watched like, wait, 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 <laughs> I, I was just gonna say I, I watched the five minutes of the of the anime because I it's on Netflix too and I was like oh this kind of follows the story of the OG how I appreciate that they didn't like just take the canon and put it in the trash can so I was like okay okay and the characters actually the actors look like the anime characters appreciate that I, I, mm -hmm. every time they reboot something this I love that it's not a reboot it's like let's make a live action version ish of the OG. And I, I appreciate that. Like, just don't take something and just go trash can. Yeah. It, it's very rare when you get something that actually works in that respect. Um, mm -hmm. When Vera, when you were mentioning that, I, I for one of the first things I thought of was when they did the X Men back in back in the two thousands, like the live action X Men, and it's like they're all wearing black leather, and you know you're just thinking like, where's Wolverine in his classic yellow and 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 black and with with the with the yeah. face mask? Where is Cyclops with you know like you know where are the costumes that we know in the comics? You know, and they and liberties can be taken. <laughs> They all went, yeah, yeah, it was totally uh, BDSM. Rico, this sounds was, like some but... serious gatekeeping on your part. <coughs> I, I completely agree with you, though. <laughs> I'm not okay. going to disagree <laughs> at all. When I saw the X-Men, I was like, this isn't, the, what, is, what is this like? They're riding motorcycles right, right. in their leather jackets. But let me tell you, because, yeah, that's definitely something to talk about. Let me tell you what I got when I watched this first episode. I got something that was relatively mildly somewhat enjoyable um <laughs> it that did make me a little curious about the first of all i didn't know that cowboy bebop was an animated series i thought it was a movie i just never really thought i just assumed it was a movie and so then when i saw that this was a series i was like oh <laughs> I bet the uh, the anime thing was also a series. But in this case, what I got was something that was, it was okay. It was, uh, it was fine. Okay. Let's move forward. And let me give you an example. When, oh, it, op boy. when it opened up and, you know, first thing drops in machine gun sounds, uh dudes with guns that was the my first thought was quentin tarantino it just felt like pulp fiction or jackie brown you know that's what it it reminded me of um then they have that really cool opening scene and i was like oh fun enjoyable then a cool uh the cool theme song that was fun and then once the theme song ended and let me look in my notes you know there was a Good, uh, good camera work. Everything was great. But I'm trying to see what I said in my notes. Anyway, basically, when the theme song ended and it opened up on the next scene, suddenly it hit me. Oh, there it is. Um, as soon as it ended, I said, feels like I'm going to be bored all of a sudden. I don't know why, but it just hit me that after that fun, exciting thing, 
I'm about to be bored for 45 minutes. From and Rico, that opening action scene? It, no, it was that scene entertained me. And the yeah. theme song was cool. And then it moved on to the very next thing. And suddenly I realized that I'm not really sure if this is going to entertain me for 50 minutes or if it was just a fun opening sequence. And I just got this impression that I'm going to be possibly bored the rest of the way. Okay. And I know you want to destroy me for this, Rico. So go ahead. <laughs> you rotten. And Vera's in line Vera, next. But, She's like, let yeah. me at him. <laughs> you know what? I'm gonna let I'm a I'm a I'm gonna go the ladies first round. Vera, have Adam. Leave, leave, I, make I, sure there's no survivors. <laughs> it, it's not that, it's just that. It's so, you're right. It's very cliche to open up the opening scene. Like all the writers in Hollywood think that you have to like catch them in like with the opening action scene. Like, and then you'll explain later what that, that all that crap's all about. So I, I do understand it. I'm kind of myself tired of this whole cliche, big bang opening scene, get the audience in. And just like Ryan said, it's like, well, now you have to sit there and listen to the explanation of how they got there and what. Oh, they're in space. They're in a casino in space. Okay, great. Like it's, <laughs> you're right. They they blew our minds. And now we're like, oh, is this going to be this pace the whole entire time? And it's mm. like, and let's sit here in our spaceship and and <laughs> go to the bathroom and make some lunch. And <laughs> I mean, going to the bathroom is important. Just it is. I do, do it every we week. To know about this. <laughs> yeah. The fact that they have a bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> a bathroom set okay they couldn't like chain her to a radiator like everyone else but, yeah a dirty bathroom because it's been done already ship. so like no one would ever clean that it's already been done and yeah right, right. is but is it a boy's ship is it a boy's ship over here it is it's like it, a bachelor it, pad for dudes i don't know for boys <laughs> take it away rico um <laughs> No, that was that was that was good. I like that. Um, I, I so along with never seeing Cowboy Bebop, I, I knew of it. I knew of it. Um, I like the opening. I thought the, the opening had the classic. Let's let's introduce these characters, show them what they're all about, and let's go. You know, um, I. I'm not surprised Ryan is acting this way. Um, acting? No. Yeah. <laughs> Usually it's because he hasn't had his sippy cup, his nap, or, you know, some, some, some of the things that as kids, you know, you or his bubble, his Michael Bublé drink. Um, but it's, I felt like you have to, you have to give the show a chance, even if you see the cliches that that you've seen a thousand times before, because for the most part, it still works. Um, and I like the fact that they started out, they came in hot and then we kind of mm -hmm. chilled out and we're like, Whew, all right, they're coming in hot. They're giving us they're giving us the go. Um, and now we're this is the first episode we're learning about who these guys are who we're learning about what how they how they get down what they're all about their various little personalities quirks and stuff like that so i appreciated it for for the the direction and the way that they they took it so i basically think ryan's on crack yeah i'm on a crack. Right, get off the crack <laughs> say no to drugs <laughs> crack is whack the only way i could get off the crack is by standing up all right so <laughs> That was actually good, Ryan. I Thank usually you. don't give you anything for Thank credit you. when it comes. <laughs> it just came to me. Jokes. It came to me. You somehow. make it beer. Cough. It. I mean, that was that was good. I'm it's gonna die. I, I cough when I laugh, so it's like. Oh. Well, we're all gonna die. You, every. Wait. Every time you laugh, you cough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why oh, I you, have must water. Comedy, <laughs> you must be a hooting comedy. You must be a hooting comedy club. <laughs> Of course, I now I'm sure you can't go. What? What'd you say? I don't know. Stop making me laugh, Rico. I, I, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just existing. 
I exist, right, right, right. therefore, take a screenshot. Hell no. All right. So, um, <laughs> freeze frame. Uh, look, I will say though that it, it will, okay, sure. I just, that was just the impression I got was that like, I, I just had the impression that it, I was going to be bored. That doesn't mean I was bored. It just, I, I just felt suddenly like, uh oh, I think I know where this show is going and I'm not really going to care very much. And I will say on the positive side, the show moved very well. Uh, the pacing was great. I did actually not get bored throughout the show. Like it didn't, it didn't actually bore me at any point because it moved quickly enough and it was entertaining. It was funny. There was a moment I did laugh out loud and I don't remember what it was. Although when I'm looking for that moment that did make me laugh out loud. Oh, there it is. When the girl was looking for the password, she's like, what's the password? And he has it written down, password bean. That's funny because like, yeah, it's true. If anybody's ever going to break into your computer and you have your password, you know, post-it noted right there, that's right. really funny. Although I would have thought that it would also have been funny if you keep that. But then later on, she types in the password and it turns out that they just put that in case they ever get captured or something happens. And then it says security breach and captures her because, you know, that would be a great booby trap, you know, because then they type that in and you, yes. you program in that word as the booby trap word, knowing that that means it's somebody else. But anyway, the joke still worked great for me, uh, but it moved well. It was fun. I'm, I'm wondering, yeah, right? like, in, in their era of technology, do they even need a password? Where did the ship just know who you are? It's like, welcome. I didn't even oh, understand no. what, <laughs> what era it was. I thought it was the 50s and the 70s and then like future. And I was hoping you guys had right. seen. What, what is it, Rico? You got the answer here. I, I, I'm just, I, I think that <laughs> this is part of the mid-century modern-ish coolness of like certain levels of simplicity that, that you know, you still got to put in a password. You know, it's like I remember reading uh, on one of the threads somebody mentioned with uh, Discovery, why does uh, David Cronenberg still wear glasses in the 224th century? You know, it's like why, you know, so it's just kind of like there's still something cool about certain things that, yeah, you would think in the future, your passwords, you should just be able to be like, hello, Rico, welcome. And, you know, and, and boom, you're in or you just say a couple of things and you're in. So, right. Well, I, here's a, I, I don't, I don't fault them for that. I, you know, well, here's a like, question for well, you our guys. Have more security than their ship, so. <laughs> what do you guys yeah. think about this? And this is also a question for uh, the people watching, you know, let us know in the comments below, because I really don't know the answer to this. The fact that they have these, this mix of different decades in there. Like I thought I saw some fifties in there. There was clearly some sixties and seventies. It's got like old sixties car. Even one of the, this little jet that was flying out looked like it was built out of a car from the fifties or sixties. So my question is, is it, is there something in universe that explains this weird mix of sixties look and feel with clearly science fiction you know future spaceships is there something in universe that explains this or is this just a quote leave your brain at the door and go with us stylistic choice you know like steampunk for example right right um if if it's not then i'm gonna say like i say to everybody else who likes to gatekeep just enjoy Cowboy Bebop for what it is. What you is know, it though? The other thing. Uh, well, it's a it's <laughs> a ragtag crew of bounty hunters chases down the galaxy's most dangerous criminals. They'll save the world for the right price. It's a good point. Oh, I already said that, but there you go. You asked. Mm -hmm. It's definitely leave your brain at the door kind of thing, because like, why would there be a recreation of Tijuana in space? I mean, if if the whole show took <laughs> place on Earth and they're just coming back to Earth and TJ is just, you know, like 
never got upgraded to, and, which is possible. I can understand that certain places on Earth are still like in this stone age for space travel, but it's TJ in space, right? Did I understand that correctly? Like, why would Vera, they have TJ in space? Vera. Am I thinking? I guess. You, Stop it. Clearly, you have not partied in TJ and its shows. I don't, I, I don't, <laughs> I don't know if that's for a fact. I mean, I don't know. And I'm not hating, Clearly. but <laughs> TJ, well, at least back in the day, was a cool little spot. I don't know how it is now. It's been, I don't know. <laughs> I'm just but talking. we're talking about TJ in space now, you know, like TJ in space. Somebody that's had a to show say it. right there. Somebody had to say it. Come on, that would Somebody. be a great spinoff, actually. TJ. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Well, it also looks like it's very, like I don't know, very westernish. Very yep. uh, has a just kind of has that that cool vibe to it. That I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, I get it. I, okay. I so it sounds like it's probably just a stylistic choice more than some in-universe like, you know, for example, like they could say an alternate reality in which in 1958, you know, uh, an alien spacecraft lands on the planet and changes the trajectory of the Earth and puts in a different universe or, or whatever it is, you know, like something to where that something that explains why it's stylistic like the, the 60s, but... Right clearly in our future you know or if it's just no explanation just yeah. whatever this is what the person wanted the person was that wrote it was very creative wanted to have fun and wanted to say hey whatever here's here's my vision enjoy yeah you're, you're correct because if this is based on a 1960s vibe remember we went to the moon in the 60s we had cars that look like spaceships we got you know palm springs and if you ever go there they're like stuck in the 60s and they're all space, like go-go boots and plastic clothes, and everybody thought we were in the future in the '60s. So maybe this it's is a true. style choice. This is true. Of course, we we're coming in like literally virgins here. Of, right, we are. Uh, what, like, what yeah, do we know? This, right, exactly. Of this franchise, you know, we ju we just work it. What do we know? We're so. about What's, to be slammed hard. Yeah, I was <laughs> just gonna say. You know, what's gonna be great is all the comments. That are like obviously you idiots. Cowboy Bebop is about, and they're going to say all this stuff, and and we're going to be like, oh, I don't know. I'm just watching the thing on Netflix, and all I saw was good, interesting characters, good, fun action, a lot of weird shit that makes no sense at all. So I'm assuming that you have to just not think about it, and you know. Something that was kind of maybe maybe almost had a little bit of a Guardians of the Galaxy vibe, you know, since Rico, yeah, you're definitely. mentioning uh, Marvel, you know, where it's kind of like it's kind of like, hey, don't take yourself too seriously. Have some fun. Enjoy the ride. You know, actually, That's... I think it's great that none of us have any prior. Totally. totally. So here's three people that have no idea just going in literally blind to like we know nothing, nothing. We know actually. nothing. Well, it also gives a much more honest and it shows. <laughs> yeah, it gives a much more honest review, too, because look, people that are already fans of Cowboy Bebop, the animated series, they're going to judge this either less harshly because they're huge fans or more harshly because it's a little different and they want their favorite show still, you know, whereas we can look at it with completely open and fresh eyes and be like, eh. like for me. I'm not a fan of the of the original show, so I don't know. I don't. I don't have any preconceived notions. I could just walk in and judge it for what it is. And when I walk in and judge it for what it is, I say eh, it, was, it was okay. It was fine. It was a uh, mildly entertaining, uh, and I hope it does well. Yeah. Um, now the the show. I recognize two of the actors from the show. I Sulu. Don't... We got Sulu. Yeah. We got John Cho, Sulu from Star Trek. The, Harold? the um, yeah, the Harold. is he Harold oh, or Kumar? Harold, yeah, he's Harold. Harold. Yeah, yep, from Star Trek 2009 and and the the, the and movies onward. afterwards. We have uh, Mustafa Shakir who uh, played uh, Bushmaster in the second <laughs> season of uh, Luke Cage. Uh, Bushmaster. Luke Cage. Oh, that's cool. Bushmaster. Yeah, yeah, he was kind of like his his uh, nemesis and that, but I don't recognize 
the lady. <laughs> um, she needs to stand up. Um, but yeah, I don't recognize who she is. But uh, shout out to Mustafa Shakur, a uh, friend of mine. And uh, congratulations. Oh, no way. Cool. Yeah, yeah. No Good Mustafa. Work. Yeah, very, very uh, excited for, for him and the show and, and everybody. But definitely Mustafa. So, um, but yeah, um, who is the other lady? Who is she? Who Vera? Is she? What's she all about? Blast. Yeah, like, I have oh. no idea. Either. Okay. Okay. Sorry, guys. Speaking of the lady, uh, what was her name? Uh, her name was Faye something or other. Faye Valentine. Some of these names. Mm. Okay. You know what? Speaking of names, before we get to Faye Valentine, they're like, they wrote a character. They're like, okay, we need a character that has like a space jet. And he's a black guy. Let's call him Jet Black. <laughs> The dude's name I mean, is Jet Black. I was like, this is, you guys, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even going to try to, I'm not even going to try to guess what their first ideas for names were for everybody else. But that would also be a fun game where they're like, well, what should we call this guy? And they just start throwing things at the wall. Hey, that's but, almost as questionable as like when, uh, <laughs> like when book uh, comes on to the uh, discovery first time and Star Trek. Saru's like, yeah, and Saru's like, uh, welcome, oh. welcome, Mister Book. Okay, black alert. Yeah. Let's go. When, <laughs> so Vera, there's this scene where this black dude comes on the bridge for the first time, and he walks on, and they're like, oh hey, and and they go, oh hey, how's it going? Black alert. Black alert, everybody. <laughs> it just now black alert is a pretty standard thing on the show, but the timing of it just made it seem so bad. Because <laughs> he walked in, he's like, Oh, what what's this like? And they all kind of got on edge. They're like, Oh, uh <laughs> who's this guy? <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, you know, in the original cartoon, that character is not black. Interesting. Oh, is he? And oh, is really? his name still Jet Black? Or is it just I, I Jet know. and they added the last name later? That is an, a very interesting question. I don't know, question. but the way they the the way that character is drawn, actually, the way they styled it in the show is is very similar. Like mm -hmm. the beard, is, like they they matched it pretty good. So great, that's cool. Does it matter? <laughs> yeah, what about you know, they celebrities? What that's about cool. the rest Ooh. of the characters? Were they all? Did they all seem pretty similar? John Cho so. character does, yeah. Because with the hair yeah. and everything, and, the, and um, yeah, when I was looking for this background, I saw like an image, and I was like, "Wow, John Cho's character looks like spot on." Yeah, to the original. Do you think they gave him the perm, or they actually curl his hair every morning? That's my question. Rico, I, I'm, uh, well, uh, being the perm expert, um. <laughs> Um, <laughs> we could ask Shatner. <laughs> Didn't he have a perm in the 80s? <laughs> Get him on the horn. Get him on the horn. Um, I Well, you know, I mean, he this this is his hair for the series. So obviously they either told him, you know, you got a month, grow it out. Don't do anything to it. We'll style it after that. Or it's a wig. I don't know. I'm thinking that they had him just grow it out. Yeah, oh, totally. And I'm then they just was... played with it every morning. So look, I want to talk a little bit about Faye Valentine, okay? Because that, that kind of got me on the tangent of weird character names. Faye Valentine. Okay. I'm sorry if I come off as mean here, but some of these names, again, you know, Jet Black. Faye Valentine just feels so like a 13-year-old came up with that name. But also, I feel like a 13-year-old wrote all of her lines. First thing she does is calls uh, Jonathan Cho's character. Oh, Spike. Spike. Okay. Fucking Spike too. Great, great adult name. So she calls Spike boy toy. I'm like, what adult goes yeah. and is like, Hey boy toy. Like this is her set. And then she calls him pretty boy. And then right. she said another line where I was like, okay, this poor girl has the worst line. They, they gave her anyway, there, there was another, Oh, she said, daddy's daddy's little rich girl can fly. And I'm like, okay, this is the kind of shit that I would have written when I was nine years old. So no offense to anybody there, but I, I was a little put off by some of these lines here. I was pretty kind of embarrassed for them. But didn't you think it kind of had a Quentin Tarantino like type of dialogue vibe to it though? Sure. So, so in essence, I don't know, it, it seemed like it could have worked. 
in that respect, uh, even though it, I, it comes I, off weird in terms of the, the different, di- you know, the different words and whatnot. Mm-hmm. I, I think that this is where the film noir comes in, where it's like, hey, baby, come up and see me sometime. <laughs> and her name is very film noir. It's like yeah, she's yeah. the femme fatale, except she's not wearing the ball cat, cut gown and looks like Jessica Rabbit. She's a bounty hunter now. And she would have cheesy lines because, I don't know, these people are, you know, you're in space. Do you have social skills? Like, do you ever learn to orate properly? Like, who knows? Yeah, I'm not Maybe bad. she was I'm raised by wolves. Who knows? Ooh, They're almost it. like caricatures. Uh, but yeah, yeah. I, I agree with you, Vera. I think that, and it took me almost the entire episode to realize that, but I was like, maybe that's just another thing with like the mix of decades and, and time frames where it's just kind of like, maybe they're just, they're, they're deliberately being, you know, ridiculous or silly. Look, these are extreme characters. This is kind of silly dialogue, just, just go with it, you know? And it's hard for my brain to just go with it. Cause I go like, what? People don't talk like that, but maybe that's just the style. I'm thinking that it's probably just the style and it's, it's just kind of funky retro and, and it's being catered that way. And here we are on a Saturday. Here we are discussing whether it works or not. Uh, maybe, uh, eh. It's not the best writing. Ryan's correct. It's not <laughs> like they could have. Hey. better. <laughs> zip, zip, zip it. Maybe. Obviously I write <laughs> hey people in the world of yeah. chatting and stuff and talking and doing this yeah <laughs> yeah what do you think we yeah, want to know that's all we got i'm I really guess. looking forward to the comments because people are going to be either grilling us or the, <clears throat> i hope they just educate us i hope they just answer all these questions because i'm really yeah, curious yeah, yeah. it I will say that this show made me want to watch the animated series just to answer those questions to be like, Mm -hmm. are they paying homage to this animated series? Because that would make sense why they, Mm -hmm. they speak this way and why things are delivered in this way is because they're just paying homage to an old anime show in which case, yeah, you'd want it to have that voice, you know, but since I've never seen that anime show, it kind of comes out of left field to me. Do you guys have a, favorite character vera oh me under the bus uh i i need to see these people a little more you know just to to favorite somebody i i do like i do like the lead i do i do think that he's doing exactly what he was written to do like brooding man lost the love of his life you know cliche cliche and he's doing the best that he can with that. So I like the way the character is being styled. I like, like what can you do? A, a yet another space cowboy assassin guy. Uh, uh, never been done before. Just, it's a big, it's a big galaxy, Vera. It's a, it is. It's a, <laughs> you know. And they are going to protect it or be <laughs> guardians of it. Of, <laughs> ah, and now there's a concept. Maybe have a little right. Raccoon. They should do that one day. Yeah. Yeah. Ragtag group of whatever base for, people for a prize. Uh, that's no. That's maybe have totally. a green lady in there and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Some, she's an ass or go ahead, kick something. Her. Yeah. Somebody <laughs> with the like the, the little things. I, I now there you go, there you go, and maybe a muscle dude. I'm thinking a yeah, muscle. Dude. Yeah, I think every group needs a muscle dude. Oh, a large muscle dude. That never happens, so that's good. Just a right now, write that. Right now, yeah. everybody at home is going, hey, guys, we got the joke. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, well, we got it. We got, we we got it. <laughs> I can tell. Oh, about Ryan, you're just like, I'm just going to let him grade. I was. I was just going to let you guys second. go, but you guys are like, well, then we'll just keep going. You guys totally <laughs> outdared me there. <laughs> totally. Wait, wait. We played, we played a game you. of chicken, and I lost. Um <laughs> Rico, do you have a favorite yeah. character? And if you don't um, say your buddy, then that's very hurtful. I know, I know. Um, I, I really, I, I mean, I really did like Mustafa's character, and and there, there was a, it, it kind of reminded me, and it gave me a little bitty bit of like a B. A. Baracus. Uh, oh, 18, cool. Uh, vibe oh. to it. 
Yeah, yeah. Um, it, it it still stay you know stays on its own. It it still you know his character is not that. But hey, for nostalgia reasons, it 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 kind of I, I saw that. But I really do like John Cho's character, and I, I'm I'm interested in seeing um more of that and and just the the story, the backstory. Um, I really enjoyed it. So I guess in a way, I enjoyed both. Um. I, and I know I'm only supposed to pick one, even though the rules don't necessarily say that. You do what you like. Damn, Skippy. So, yeah, yeah, there you go. That's my answer, and I'm sticking to it. Interesting. I'm going to tell you my favorite character. I don't have one. Tell us, Brian. Um, what? I like, you know, I, w- I will say that when they first started calling Jonathan Cho's character a cowboy, I did yeah. assume, I was like, I wonder if the other dude's name is Bebop but it didn't end up working that way. Uh, but that was my first, I thought I was like, Oh, maybe it's cowboy and bebop, you know, but then bebop and rock steady. That's like a whole Ninja turtles kind of thing. Right. But right. Right. I will say, I like those two guys a lot. Um, they were both fine. I like both actors and both characters. I also yeah. like the dude that had a coffee mug that said, I drink coffee for no other reason than that mug. <laughs> I was like, I wonder if I can get that mug. That's actually kind of a, a funny oh, thing. Oh, you know you, you know you can get it. Merchandising. Yeah. <laughs> get him with the mic. Get him with the mic. Get him with the We may share the Netflix passwords, but we're going to get him with the mic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We so, don't share Netflix passwords. Do not share Netflix passwords. That speaking of Netflix, Netflix passwords, that is a perfect segue for this. Vera well, Vanguard... Let's yes. talk yeah. about you for a moment, by the mm-hmm. way. So the you, way. you're an actress, a writer, you're a director, you're a hand mm-hmm. model. Um, what's new? What's new? Uh, well, if you hadn't noticed these strange creatures sitting next to me, uh, mm-hmm. I am doing a feature film and these are my cast members. And uh, what people don't know is that I'm one of the top toy puppeteers in the world. So I want to do a feature film featuring my hands, puppeteering all wow. the toys and talk about merchandising. Girls, who doesn't want a hot little emo puppet like this? And this is Tom. This is Izzy. And then we have, these are the prototypes. He's Cliff. After Withering Heights, not the cat. Oh. The project's called Apocalypse Love and it's Zombies, Aliens. And a little necromancy. Wow. <laughs> wow. That that's the edgy part of the of the series, right? Right, right, right. Sure. Right. Why not? So it's never been done before in feature film form. And I, I've been doing this for Mattel and Hasbro and Spin Master for many years. And I'm like merchandising. Mm-hmm. Merchandising. Merchandising. So, so hopefully these will be in hot topics at some point. Very Use the smart. movie as a giant commercial. Ladies, get yourself an emo purple haired <laughs> dude, and everything will be fine, right? At least as a lead. Well, he's running around with the body bag with his ex girlfriend. Anyway, oh. you're going to have to watch the movie to understand what that's all about. Wow. That's how zombies and aliens come into it. Uh, body bag with your apocalypse ex- love, girlfriend. everybody. Oh, at apocalypse love movie. Yes. Well, he digs her up. Now he needs to. I, I guess. I guess he would need to. Hope. Well, <laughs> hopefully, at least she. At least she was well, already on the ground. End of the world. <laughs> no, listen. I'm not. I'm she, not. I'm know, not. I'm not judging. Her. No, I, I I think it's a cool concept, and and it makes me really want to know why and what's happening, and why is he rubbing that bag like that? And, and you know, just seriously, what what's what's happening now? Now, this is your current project. This this is yes. your your latest joint, your latest yes. Vera Vanguard yes. joint, or yes. um, or as they say in uh in um in Philly, John. Uh, their yes. their thing is John. That means really? that their product. Weird. Yeah, yeah. Philly, Philly. They they say John, or in New York, it's like joint, like a Spike Lee joint. Sure, joint. But basically, yeah. they're saying my project. Um, but um, I happen to know that you are also 
uh, mutual friends uh, with a one Scott Baker, who uh, Ryan and I both know very well. Good friend. I've had the yeah, Rico opportunity to work very well. I, yeah, if I ever see him in a dark alley or a light, lit, lit alley, who knows? Um, but you also worked with Scott Baker as well um, uh, on a music video. And, well, guess uh, what? Guess who's shooting this movie for me? <laughs> Scott uh, Baker. Let me guess. Hold on. Oh, okay. That that was good. That was my second guess. Quentin Ooh. Tarantino. Tarantino That's first. Good. But that he was passed. My fourth. So we got okay. Scott Baker now. <laughs> well, can, yes. can you tell us a little bit about the, the music video and what what how that how uh, that went? And obviously you didn't want to kill Scott because he's working on this one now. So. Oh Scott, Scotty's the very, very best. And I met him thanks to this show. We were also, he was also a guest together. And then afterwards, I'm like, Scotty, I do weird shit. He's like, I do weird shit too. And so we wound up working together on quite a few things now. And he's do on board for my puppet, necro, <coughs> zombie, alien. <laughs> uh, yeah, the, the music video is called Subdued. It's by a band called Fira. They are vampire pirates. So they're vampires. And Scotty shot it for me. It's out. You can find it on YouTube. Subdued by Van Fira, F-I-R-A. I, I, so I sense a pattern here. I sense a pattern going on here. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a reason why me and Ryan have been friends for like 15 years. Has it been <laughs> and, that? And well, that's right. We did, we did think about that recently. We, 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 did. we saw each other at the Saturn Awards recently. We did. And we're like, has it been 15 years? That's insane. I can't believe we met when we were three. But also... Yeah, like that. Everybody at home, if you'd like to see that magic moment, as Roy Orbison would say, this magic, mo um, you know that song, where Vera and Scott met each other. It was on WTF number 15 with Vera and Scott, and we reviewed Star yeah. Wars, The Clone Wars. That was that magic okay. moment. And also, okay. everybody at home, uh, keep an eye on... It. And that's when... Yeah, what? keep an eye. Check, out, check out the description box below. We will include all of Vera's goodies for you to click on so that you can keep track of this new project and when it's coming out and what she's working on on top of this project. So stay tuned for that. It's going to be great stuff. Vera, you said you're starting to shoot that in like a month, right? Yeah, next month, cameras roll. No matter rain or shine, it's going to happen. I'm just waiting for for the rest of the puppets to come in they're being made by hand like see this is all hand painted wow. uh yeah. they're making them in slovenia for me oh like, wow holy crap so i'm waiting for that to come in but they're and, they're all wow rico that's your home country slovenia yeah 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 that's yeah <laughs> i love You're that there, right oh i you know this, this guy actually is a he's an insurance salesman that decides to go postal on everyone. So he shows up at work completely decked out in guns, but everyone's dead. Whoops. Wait, are they I dead? Given away anything yet. <laughs> are they are they dead by the time he gets there, or is he the reason that yeah, yeah. So he he doesn't get he's all dressed up and nowhere to go, but ironically, Aww, he is the most prepared now because he's armed to the teeth to fight the zombies. It's oh. it's almost yeah, it's almost like all dressed up and nowhere to go. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's it. Right. I, I, hate itself. I didn't even have yeah. to do any work. I hate what <laughs> right. happens. Speaking of not doing any work, everybody check that out. <laughs> and now it's time for Michael's favorite part is when we do this karate chop here, because that's his signal during the edit to move on to the bottom line, also, also known as the terrible twos. He calls it the bottom line. Everybody else in the same world calls it the terrible twos. It's the you final two. We don't figure we're, we've only done like 90 of these. You expect us to get it down within 90 episodes, Rico? I mean, um, usually at 87, you pretty much got a lock on it. But hey, then maybe we're a little behind accounting. But please go ahead. <laughs> so it's the final two questions of the show. Probably the most important questions. So you're not going to want to miss this. Check it out. Question number one, Rico E. Anderson, hot seat, scale of one to ten. What would you give this first episode of Netflix's Cowboy Bebop? 4,422. No, I would give it a, I would give this show 
a good, I'll give it a 7.8. Mm-hmm. 7.8 out of 10. Don't ask me how I got the little point percentages. I will not answer because I don't know. But 7.8. Sounds reasonable. Vera Vanguard, who was beside herself with excitement, scale of one to 10, uh, what would you give this one? I give it a solid 5.5. I'll tell you why. Because Ooh, wait, what? What? Is like, what? <laughs> Woo! I thought Ric Flair over here, ladies and gentlemen, I thought for sure you were going to give it like a nine or something because you were just blown away. Okay. Woo! I'm sorry. Please continue. Tell us why. Uh, what a shocker. Like, I, I, I know this is the upset. Uh, even though I'm a, I am a fan now of this after this first episode, but I can take it or leave it like does it burn my soul to finish and like stream it for all nighter and do all 10 episodes not really uh Whoops. could i watch an episode here and there <laughs> sure but i'm not gonna like freaking vomit watch it till like i vomit <laughs> you know like I, I just can't like you vomit when you watch everything else right yeah <laughs> especially three's company <laughs> exactly <laughs> okay well that kind of leads us into the next question but let me answer this question myself and then we're just going to yeah. fall right into it we're going to just vomit right into the next question vera coincidentally this is shocking because i peed on this episode a little bit you lifted it up so high yet we're both giving it a 5.5 this is really crazy so maybe that means i'm like focused wow. on the negative and you're focused on the positive but we're both giving 5.5s and the reason I gave it we're a 5.5 5 is because taking myself out of this, I found that this is an okay show and I can see that some people would enjoy it and some people would think it's fun. I don't have anything, anything really wrong with it that I can say and I don't have any problems with it. I do think similarly to Squid Game, everybody check out our Squid Game review, which was, uh, geez, I don't even, even remember. It was uh, number 85, WTF number 85, came out just a couple months ago. I feel like it was written by and for middle school boys. I feel like this is something that I would have either loved. It, it's, it's, it's either great for 11-year-old boys, 9 to 15, but right around 11 or 12, or for stoned high schoolers. That's, I feel like those are the two... <laughs> things that I could see people really getting into it. For me personally, I'm like, mm, whatever. It's got a target audience Mark. and I, I'm not it. Um, but here's the big question. For the purposes of this podcast, we all had to watch the first episode of Cowboy Bebop. Now that the podcast is over and we're free to move about the internet, Rico E. Anderson, would you of your own volition watch the second episode? Yes. I believe in seeing things through. If 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 I yeah, if I like it if I like it enough, I want to see it through. I did like this enough. Um and on a personal level, I I love it when my friends succeed. I yes. love it when my friends get, you know, get that booking and do that thing. I want to support. So, um to you Mustafa, congratulations. I want to support you. I will be watching. There Mustafa's is definitely watching and he saw that message that you just sent him. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> Vera. Yes. Would you of your own I, volition watch the second episode? Just so you know, I did vomit watch Squid Game. So it is possible <laughs> for me to like a show enough to do that. <laughs> this I, one, I don't need to vomit watch it. I could, I, I will finish it, but like on my own time when I'm like doing my hair. That, that sort of thing like oh enough. i need to dry my hair for 45 minutes so i guess i could watch an episode mm -hmm. i i feel like with vera vomiting <laughs> ryan you peeing i feel like i should be like i don't know blowing snot rockets or you're the poo guy or, yeah or, <laughs> or, yeah, or, yeah, or <laughs> defecating or, or, or something i don't know I, I feel i feel left out now so everybody in the comments <laughs> below what kind of excretion do you think Rico should partake in while watching it? Are we talking snot rockets? Are we talking earwax <laughs> picking, pooping, farting? What? What? I'm not actually. I'm not going to name the rest, but picking up the toes. Okay, you know, I just came back from New York. There's a lot of buildup. 
you know, just saying. Oh, yeah. Hey, I just saw our viewership <laughs> drop down to zero. That's cool. Oh, good. <laughs> that she won't even get that magical 100th episode. Yeah. Vera is dying over here. Vera, stop coughing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I can't. They're like, do not sit her in the front at the comedy store. Just don't do it. <laughs> yeah, just... Put me in the back. Way okay. in the back. Horrible. Ever live stream. <laughs> so I'm going to tell you if I would watch the second episode of my own volition. Wait, Ryan. Yes. Would you watch the second episode? I feel like I should be asking you this. I yeah, feel yeah, like yeah. As, a, as a good host, I should be putting the question on you as opposed to you just deciding you want to answer it yourself without the proper questioning i completely agree with you and i like the way you delivered it yes thank you would you Mm -hmm. watch the second episode ah of it oh hmm. let me think that's a good oh Oh, shatner i didn't know you'd visit us today that's a good question um my answer is not surprisingly no um, and it's a very easy no for me because I'm not interested in watching any more of this. However, I want to encourage everybody to watch it, to go support Rico's buddy. Cause I think that's really awesome when somebody works their ass off for their entire life and finally gets a big break and moves on with their life or bigger and bigger and bigger breaks. I'm, I'm assuming he's had some good work previous to this and I want people to support this show And I will if I have to, but I'm not planning on watching any more of this because when the episode ended, I had zero desire to. That's the only reason. You you went to go pee, basically, is what you're saying. (laughs) No, I was all done. (laughs) Oh. You had a 25 minute pee. (laughs) Yeah. And I filled it up. Anyway. So everybody at home, if you'd like us to review a show it, again, it could be a show that you hate or like or something that you think would be hilarious to watch us be tortured by. Whatever you want, you let us know in the comments below. Say WTF and the show that stands for Watch the First, and we will do it. And I want to reiterate that I did not dislike this show. And for some reason, I feel like this show has heart. And I feel like this show is going to have more heart as the season progresses. And just because I'm not patient enough or I'm not the target audience to want to see it through does not mean that I don't encourage people to go check it out. I do. Um, Anyway, so let us know what you'd like us to review. Very special thanks to Rico E. Anderson for stepping in for Michael Canyon Rosenberg. It is no small task and we appreciate him for that. So check out his links in the description box below. And Vera as well, very special thanks for joining us, War Princess, and for telling us all about this great idea that you are going to be sharing with the world soon. That's so cool. I can't wait. I can't wait. I'm I'm excited. Mm -hmm. (laughs) That's so cool. So what I'm trying to say is this podcast had a few glitches, but was very enjoyable, just like the show. This podcast had the ride that one needed to get their right what are you doing tune in next week when rico finishes his sentence (laughs) to get their their quirky storytelling done jeez that that hurt Take what was the question? Now. I forgot. <laughs> I don't even know what the question was. Oh, this show, um, yeah, go, go, please, hurry. This show needed is that the is that what we're answering? What it needs? No, just this wants? this podcast oh, no. was. Oh, this podcast was amazing as always. I love you guys, and we are the most uh, greatest of all time. There, fantastic. Awesome. That's the best one so far. <laughs> we're the goat. Hey. <laughs> Shout out to Michael King and Rosenberg um, on a continued recovery. Yep. yep. Shout out. Feel better. Yeah. And and it's it's an honor to uh, it's an honor to be here and to uh, this is a little kind of a little R and R reunion that we kind of yep. got as well for a lot of the uh, old schoolers who know about the R and R show. 
Um, but uh, yeah, Michael, thinking of you, buddy, and we love you and uh, continue to get better. Mm -hmm. Very well said. Thanks, Rico. That's awesome. So everybody at home, give us a like and check everything out that we give you in the description box below. Please comment below, share this with your friends, subscribe to this channel. Get and well remember, soon, Michael, get well. We're thinking about you. We are. There she is. And remember, Rico, jump in on this. What Michael Kenyon Rosenberg always likes to say. Don't forget to register as a donor, as a, as a donor. And don't forget to watch the first of things. Dude, A plus, you nailed it. Mm -hmm.